Uh, basically, you've got three formats. You've got the comic book, you've got the graphic novel, and you've got the trade paperback. Now, a lot of people use the terms comic and graphic novel interchangeably. I'm not one of them. While superheroes are the most popular genre of comics, they are not the only genre. How do you find it? That becomes a question. So the simple way to find something is to simply go to a comic store and talk to the people working there. Ask them, hey, what do you read? What do you like? Um, what would you recommend? These are my tastes. Generally, that's going to work for you. But let's say that doesn't work for you. Let's say you go to the comic store and they're uncooperative. They treat you like an outsider. It happens. You can simply browse the stacks, see what they have for sale, or you can pick up a copy of Preview. So what Previews is, is a listing of all the comics that are coming out in a couple of months. Uh, the November issue deals with January comics. And it lets you know so you can pre-order what you want. Because of the direct market system, if a, if a comic store buys a comic, the comic store now owns that comic. And they don't want to over-order or they'll get stuck with a bunch of comics that don't sell and won't sell. So you can pick up an issue of previews. It contains descriptions. It contains uh, the price. It contains titles. It contains release dates. Anything you could possibly want to know. So you can just peruse that. Used to be free, now they charge $4 for it, but I think it's well worth it if you're starting to get into comics or you're looking for something new. So let's backtrack a little bit and talk about comic books. You've just gotten back from the comic store. It's comic day. New comics are released on Wednesdays. Um, you've got your books. You want to read them. You get done with them. What do you do now? Now, if you're a collector, and that's what we're focusing on, we're focusing on collecting. You want to take care of them, you want to protect them. So you need a couple of things. The most basic piece of equipment that you're going to need to take care of your comics is a bag. Now these come in three different sizes, golden age, silver age, and current age, or modern age, depending on the company. The bags are different sizes. Um, typically, I like to buy silver age because the current age fit into them perfectly and I buy a lot of silver and current age. I don't buy so many golden age bags or golden age comics. I do like to keep a package of golden age bags around just in case I happen into one uh, or I pick up uh, in the 70s DC did a lot of hundred page giants which don't fit so well into silver age bags. Um, so you want to have bags. They're made out of uh, plastic don't just throw your comics in a baggie or some ridiculous thing like that. Um, these are designed specially to take care of comics and to preserve them. Going hand in hand with the bags, you've got the boards, uh, acid-free backer boards that go in the bags behind the comics uh, to prevent them from folding or uh, ripping, tearing, getting snagged on something, whatever. Uh, they keep them from rolling the spine as well. Um, these also come in three different sizes. One of the things that you do want to make sure you do is buy them from the same company. Here you can see I bought Comic Care bags and boards. And I don't care what company you use. You know, I use different companies, whatever the comic store sells. But you want to buy them from the same company because they are measured fairly precisely. As you can see, the boards are seven inches by 10 and a half inches. And the bags are seven and an eighth inch by ten and a half inches. So you've only got that eighth inch of wiggle room between the board and the bag. And if that eighth inch is measured slightly differently by one company or another, you're going to find yourself trimming boards so they fit in the bags, which is time, time consuming and kind of a pain. So when it comes to bagging and boarding your comics, you simply take the board, put it in the bag. You want to each board will have a rough side and a shiny side. You want shiny side to the front. I tend to put the flap on the bag, which you cannot see because it's clear. Uh, I tend to put that in the front as well. And then it's a simple matter of sliding the comic in with the board. Ta-da! You have now bagged and boarded a comic. And finally, you've got the comic box. Acid-free cardboard again designed to hold comics 
uh, just wide enough to get comics into it. Uh, they come in two sizes. You've got the short box, which is what this is. Typically, they hold about 150 bagged and boarded comics. Or you've got the long box, which holds about 250. Now, let me show you a quick trick about putting comics in boxes. So when you're putting your comics in the, in the box, one thing you may want to do, something that I discovered purely by accident, really, is you might want to stagger them. What I do is by, by title. So here I've got Usagi Yojimbo by Stan Sakai, a samurai tale featuring anthropomorphic rabbits, um, going in face up. Then I get to USA Comics, face down. Now, why would I want to do this? Number one, it allows you to get more comics in a box because the spine tends to uh, be a little bit higher than the open end of the page. So if you put them all in one way, the whole box starts to pile up higher on one side than the other and you don't get as many comics in. Another benefit of doing this is you can separate the titles. So as you go through your box, you, you can quickly find, okay, here's, here's where I have this title or that title. So now we're getting into kind of the ugly side of comic collecting, the whole money issue. What's a comic worth? How do I determine what it's worth? In order to determine what your comic is worth, one of the things you're going to need ugh, is a comic book price guide. Overstreet is the name in comic book price guides. There are other ones out there, but Overstreet is pretty much the go-to. So what you've got in the price guide is page after page of listings of comics. Down the left, you've got the number of the issue. Um, every comic has an issue number for the most part. And this is how you find them. You go title to issue number. And then over here, you've got these different col columns for the grades of the comic, um, from good up to near mint. Depending on the grade or the quality of the comic, the value is going to increase or decrease. So if you're looking to grade your own comics, what you'll want to do is pick up the Overstreet Grading Guide. Now what it does is it takes you through how to grade comics and it describes the different levels, you know, what makes a comic good versus very good versus fine. There have been two uh, innovations, two changes to collecting to ensure uh, higher quality, higher grades of comics. One that people don't care for so much is comics have come polybagged in advance. So here we have Legionnaires number one bagged with a free trading card. Um, it's kind of stupid because if you're going to read the comic, you have to open it up. Now this is an outgrowth of the uh, speculator craze of the early 90s where people thought that they could buy comics and sell them years later and put their kids through college. The other innovation in collecting comics in recent years is what's known as professional grading. You can actually take your comic to a company called uh, Comics Guarantee Company and you can have them grade your comic for you. And once they've done that, they'll seal it in plastic um, and post the grade on it and why it's graded as such. Now, the thing about professionally grade com graded comics like this one is the, the consumer knows that they are in that condition, which is, is nice to know because a lot of times um, you'll find that every store, every grader grades differently. This has been graded by two or three people and they have determined that this is the in, in fact the grade. Um, so that's a, that's a nice reassurance. As a result, they cost more. A professionally graded comic, and, and I haven't seen anything scientifically, uh, but generally what I've found is uh, professionally graded comics go for about three times the amount that they normally would. So a, a comic that comes in at uh, $50 in near mint condition will go for 150 or more. And again, the higher the grade, the higher the amount. So this wraps up your introduction to collecting comics. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you next time.